It's the only one of the seven wonders of the world that is still standing today. Five million tons of stone stacked 146 meters high 4,500 years ago. The Great Pyramid of Khufu is the tallest, largest, and most enigmatic of all the pharaonic constructions. 45 centuries later, the mystery lives on. How was the pyramid actually built? French architect Jean-Pierre Houdin has been investigating this question for 10 years. He scrutinized and studied the monument with the eye of an expert, as if he were going to rebuild the whole thing himself. Today, at the end of his investigations and with the help of new technology, he's offering a revolutionary solution. Could he have managed to solve the mystery of the Great Pyramid of Khufu? To understand the mystery of the pyramids, we need to go back in time to the era when Egypt built these enormous tombs. On the Giza Plateau, these mountains of stone are the masterpieces of a civilization wholeheartedly committed to the quest for eternity. Pyramids were the sacred gateways that let kings pass through to the land of immortal life after death. The Egyptians built the finest and most impressive of them in a single century at the close of the prehistoric era. The first ones were step pyramids, like the Pyramid of Djoser at Saqqara. After the 26th century BC, the first true smooth-sided pyramids were the work of a single family headed by Snefru, who was the father of Khufu and grandfather of Kefren. Originally, the outer surface of the tombs was made of a smooth layer of dazzling white limestone blocks. Pyramids were the earthly incarnation of the sun's rays. As time went by, these outer stones got pillaged in order to build palaces, temples and mosques. Khufu still has a few left at its base, and Kefren has managed to keep its original stone layer at the top. Kefren was the last monumental pyramid that Egypt built. This period of amazing technological progress only lasted a century. Not long after, Egypt underwent serious climate changes. The country was plagued by drought and ravaged by civil wars, invasions, and social strife. The secrets of the pyramid's construction got lost during these tumultuous times. Recently, archaeologists have discovered the village that housed the workers who built these monuments 4,500 years ago. Egyptologists have unearthed numerous clues into their way of life. They were well-fed and decently housed. They were given meat, beer, and bread. The excavations have even shown that the workers were not slaves as it was once believed. They were proud to serve their pharaoh and accompany him on his journey to the afterlife. But none of this fascinating research yielded any new information about the methods used to build the pyramids, especially not for the biggest and most complex of them all, Khufu. Towering at 146 meters, it was the tallest man-made structure ever built until the end of the 19th century. Khufu is also the only pyramid with a granite chamber tucked away at its heart, with beams weighing over 60 tons, a genuine challenge within the challenge. 
the pyramid's staggering height, and this granite chamber are the two key mysteries surrounding Khufu's construction. Nobody, until now, has ever solved this riddle written in stone. Still, many theories have been put forward. In the 5th century BC, the Greek historian Herodotus suggested the use of wooden levers. Egyptologists then imagined massive ramps leading up to the summit, or else an external spiral ramp. But in the end, these theories, which we find in every historical reference book, have never been very convincing. Today, an architect claims to have solved the mystery. If he's right, it will turn out to be the most important discovery since Tutankhamun's tomb was found. Jean-Pierre Houdin's story begins in January 1999. He'd taken a year off to get some perspective on his life and was looking for a new challenge. Then one day, his father sent him a tape of a film he'd seen on TV about the mysteries of the pyramids. The documentary explored the different theories of how the pyramids were built, but not one of them was credible. His father, a former public works engineer, got caught up in the mystery and imagined a solution. The pyramid could have been built from the inside with the help of a circular tunnel. Naturally, Henri Houdin shared the idea with his architect's son. Is that your idea for an internal ramp? Intriguing. I will have a look at your drawing and call you back later. Jean-Pierre was fascinated and devoured anything he could get his hands on concerning the pyramids. He read the most reputable books, studied every drawing and analyzed every theory. Almost overnight, he became a fanatical expert on the architectural wonders of ancient Egypt. A simple architect was transformed into an obsessional genius. He threw himself 100% into his research. He closed his architecture firm and sold his apartment to move into a small family studio. He worked 10 hours a day developing his father's idea, adapting it in keeping with the ancient Egyptians' know-how. So your ramp is here. See, it's basically a great idea. But I think we should break it up into sections, like this. Seems logical. A spiral with right angles. And see, it goes up like this. Well, all you have to do is keep working on it. Well, I think it might take about 10 years before I can get you on to the internal ramp. There is a lot of work to do. <laughs> the Egyptians didn't know how to build circular tunnels. On the other hand, they knew how to make right-angled galleries. Jean-Pierre patiently developed his idea of an internal ramp. His ramp would enable limestone blocks to be hauled to the very top, 146 meters up. He believed the ramp would never have more than a 7% incline, because otherwise, it would be too steep for dragging up the stones. Notches at each right angle would allow the stones to be turned and also provide ventilation for the tunnels. It was a brilliant theory, revolutionary even, but it still had to be proven. It was time for Jean-Pierre to shift into high gear, but for that, he needed to convince the learned specialists and top experts. He spent several months contacting various Egyptologists, but no one bothered to reply. They were sick and tired of receiving yet another new theory about the pyramids. They didn't even bother to look at his dossier. Jean-Pierre didn't belong to the club. He was nothing but an outsider. And yet, the pyramid's construction is definitely an architect's business, 
at least as much, if not more so, than Egyptologists. No one's a prophet in their own land. After trying his luck with French scientists, Jean-Pierre set his sights on the U.S. In New York, one renowned Egyptologist finally agreed to meet him. Jean-Pierre pulled out his last playing card. To get to Egypt and verify his theory, Jean-Pierre needed an inn. Bob Breyer looked like he might be the man, the key that would move his investigation forward. Welcome to the Bronx. Thank you. Come on in, come on in. When he opened his laptop, there were several of us in my apartment, and we all gathered around the laptop to see what he had. And he had these beautiful, beautiful diagrams of the pyramid, things I had never seen. He had created them on the laptop, and he started explaining his theory. The architect presented his revolutionary idea. The pyramid could have been built from the inside out. Okay. So there's a ramp inside the pyramid. A ramp inside. Is it still there? She's still there, yes. And now... I thought the theory was incredible. I wasn't sure. You know, there are other theories about the pyramid, but they all have problems. This theory solved some of those problems, but it was just so amazing that I just couldn't believe it could be true at first. So what did you think the first time you saw the pyramid? Ah, the first time I saw the pyramid. Yeah. Let me tell you, Bob, I never went to the pyramid. <laughs> Never. <laughs> you never saw it? No. You've been working on this thing for five yeah, years. Five years. And you, you haven't seen the pyramid? No. No? No. Uh, Why not? Because uh, I, I think it's uh, intellectual uh, work. It's uh, something... Uh, I, I think also that I am completely free. It's a concept. Yes. At the base, the architect would draw the pyramid. I have no pyramid in front of them. Oh, Look, if anybody's going to take your theory seriously, you have to see the pyramid. Bob Breyer was hooked by the story and Jean-Pierre's theory. He decided to help him and convinced him to finally go to Egypt. Finally, five years after he began his investigation, Jean-Pierre Houdin discovered the pyramids. It wasn't like I got there and went, whoa, there's a pyramid. I was impressed like everyone, but I was already so familiar with it. I knew it inside and out. I saw it in a different way. I knew where every little stone was, every little detail, every little joint. I felt at home. Thanks to Bob Breyer, he enjoyed the rare privilege of a private tour. We are in the seas in France. This is where tourists come in now. This entrance was opened up by the Caliph Mamun around 850 AD to rob the pyramid. The real entrance is about 7 meters east of this corridor. If we keep going, we will arrive at a corridor that leads up to the Grand Gallery and the King's Chamber. But Jean-Pierre is not a tourist. He's looking for clues. In the heart of the pharaonic structure, his priority is to find evidence